Okay, let's talk about the OAE middle grade math assessment. So um, obviously no, uh, this test has to do with the state of Ohio and the OAE stands for the Ohio Assessments for Educators. And what we're gonna be talking about uh, this particular video is the middle grades math assessment. So those of you who wanna teach middle, uh, middle grades math, uh, in Ohio, you're going to have to take this assessment. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you are studying for this assessment. Uh, you're, you know, going for this exam. Hopefully, you're not extremely bored and you're just, just randomly just checking this video out. But if that's your case, welcome to the video. And <laughs> what we're going to do is take a look at this problem, and uh, we'll talk about a few other things as well. So. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I am a middle and high school math teacher. So I know what it's like to take certification exams. I did not take the OAE. I took uh, the practice exam. But, uh, you know, a lot of these exams are uh, similar. Okay, every state is a little bit different. Some states use the same uh, exam. They might call it something different. Some states have their own complete different exams. So there are some differences, but in general, a lot of the, the state level exams, uh, depending on what um, state you're in, might be a different name, but what's gonna be tested is kind of similar, okay? But there are differences. Uh, for example, um, there are some states elementary exams are more, in terms of math, are more challenging to, than other states' middle grade uh, exams. So it's kind of, you know, again, you have to know exactly what's on your state's uh, certification. So if you if you looked at the OAE middle grades uh, math assessment, you'll know that there's a real decent amount of like, you know, uh, high school level math on it, algebra, geometry, other type of topics. So you're gonna have to be really strong in high school level math. And so the problem we're gonna be taking a look at here is uh, in high school level math for sure, a high school level math problem that you should be able to handle. So it's kind of a little bit of a pop quiz. And of course, we're gonna solve this here in a second. Uh, I do wanna mention with my tablet class math program, and I've been doing this for like 15 plus years, I have thousands of students all over the world. But I have many, 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 many courses, and uh, it takes me a long time, many years, to build out, you know, the courses I feel, you know, confident with um, to to offer to other people. But I do have an OAE uh, middle grades math assessment prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. That's something you want to check out. But let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. Uh, this is something definitely you'll uh, should be able to handle uh, if you expect to do well on this assessment and even teach this material. So I'd like you to solve this equation. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna give you too many hints here, okay? I just want you to solve this equation and then of course I'm gonna solve the equation. But if you think you can do it, go ahead and pause the video and, and go ahead and do it. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, this is a, an equation. How do we know it's an equation? Well, it has this little symbol, right? That's when you have that little symbol, you're dealing with an equation. Now, what type of equation is it? Well, this little square root symbol, we refer to this as a radical, right? So this is what we would call a radical, okay, a radical equation. So we need to know how to solve radical equations. Now, let's take a step back and let's just think about uh, basic algebra one, maybe, you know, let's even go up to algebra two because you're going to have to know this for uh, the OAE middle grades assessment, algebra two level math for sure. So what type of equations do we solve? Well, you solve your basic equations, things that look like this, 2x minus 7 equals 9. Those are what we call like linear equations, okay? And then you have other things like this, let's say 2x minus 3 equals 8x, oops, 3y equals 8x minus y equals negative 5, little brackets around it. What, what is this? Well, that's a system, right? Okay, a linear system. Now, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to be teaching about all this. I just want to kind of illustrate something to you real fast here, make a point. Okay, so we have linear uh, equations, systems of equations. I have things like this: 2x squared minus x minus uh, 6 equals 0. That's a what? That's a quadratic equation, and the list goes on and on. Okay, there's quadratic equations. There's um, logarithmic equations, exponential equations, uh, rational equations, and here we're dealing with radical equations. And I know uh, I'm missing other things. We get about matrices, etc. So in algebra, I'm talking about 
Algebra 1, Algebra 2, there's a lot of different type of equations that you need to know how to solve. And they are different. The solving systems is different than solving linear equations. It's, all, it's different than solving quadratic equations and logarithmic equations, etc. So you don't want to get confused on how to solve equations. It's not like, hey, we just learned how to solve an equation and just any old mathematical um, expression with this symbol, we know what to do. Well, you need to, you need to know exactly what to do in this kind of scenario. Okay, so again, you know, depending on what your background is, I have a degree in mathematics, not math education, actual mathematics and a master's degree. And when I taught middle and, and high school math, you know, I have to, you know, you have to be uh, at your best, okay, in terms of really having a command of the content. You're not thinking about calculus or differential equations or real, all this advanced math. You've got to kind of get that out of your head a little bit. You've really got to be an expert in algebra, geometry. The things you're going to be teaching, you've got to be an expert and then really put your focus on it. So you can't um, just assume that you remember all the details of the stuff, okay? You could definitely have to go back and review. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this equation. Now, first thing we want to do is get the radical side of this by itself and we want to get the radical by itself and a number by itself so what I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3 okay now when I do that okay it's going to get the, rid of this little one-third here it's kind of bugging me so whatever I do to one side of the equation I could do the other I have to do the other side so if I multiply this side by 3 I have to multiply the this other side by 3. So it leaves me with uh, radical or the square root of 6x minus 1, however you want to say it, is equal to 6. Okay, so if you know if you got that far, okay, and we're like in agreement, good to go. All right, but now I have to get rid of this square root symbol, okay? So how do I get rid of this square root symbol to kind of move forward? Well, what I can do, you know, let me do this over here. If I have the square root of x is equal to 3 and I want to solve for x, well, this square root symbol is in the way. Okay, this radical is in the way. So the way I can get rid of it is to square both sides. So if I square a square root of x, I'm left with x. Okay, now I'm not going to over explain this right now. Hopefully you understand this, but if you don't, this is obviously something you're going to need to review. So what I'm saying here is knowing that I can get rid of a square root symbol by just squaring it. Okay, so if I have something in the square root uh, uh, operator, a square root um, symbol, if I square it, I'm just left whatever's in it. Okay, that's what is equal to. So I, I want to get rid of the square root symbol. So I, need, I have to square this side, means I have to square the other side as well. Remember in algebra, when you're solving equations, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. Okay. All right, so when I do this, I square both sides, I'm left with 6x minus 1 is equal to 6 times 6 or 36. Okay, so if uh, you're with me so far, then that's excellent. Now I have a nice linear equation. I could just go ahead and just solve this right here. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. It leaves me with 6x is equal to 37. And I can just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 6. So x is equal to 37 over 6. Okay, so is this our, here's a little question for you, okay? Is this our solution, okay? Is this our final guaranteed perfect solution to this problem? Assuming I did everything correctly here. So obviously there's some sort of twist here, some sort of, <laughs> it's not a trick, but I, again, I'm testing your knowledge. Well, maybe. Okay, all right. Every time, anytime you solve a radical equation, okay, or whatever you end up with after doing, after squaring both sides, okay, when you square both sides of a radical equation, you can introduce something called extraneous roots, or extraneous roots, which means extra solutions. Meaning that, really, what this means is that your answer down here is not actually you have to confirm that it, in fact it is a solution okay so you have to take this and you got to plug it back into the original equation radical equation to make sure that it balances it out so I would plug that uh, this 37 over 6 into this right here and then go ahead and check to see if it balances I'm not going to do it here in fact it does work but you have to check for extraneous roots okay I don't want to make this video too long just wanted to kind of see hey were you familiar with the concept of extraneous roots or 
you know, did you under, kind of understand what was going on? You're going to be teaching, you know, middle grade uh, math, okay, in Ohio. So what kind of math is that going to, you know, like what grades, all right? You're all sixth grade. I don't, I'm not familiar with Ohio exactly, but in general, you would be teaching or uh, possibly teach you sixth grade, seventh grade, right? Eighth grade, that's the middle school. But what kind of math is going on at eighth grade? Well, typically, that's where students are in pre-algebra, but many students are, are on a more advanced track and be taking Algebra 1. And even some schools will offer even like honors geometry or geometry. So these students here, they'll end up in calculus uh, as seniors in high school. So, you know, just ask yourself, how many students are taking calculus as a senior in high school? A lot. How did they get there? Well, they were taking Algebra 1 in eighth grade. Okay. So meaning that you may have to be teaching Algebra 1 in eighth grade, okay, if you're a middle, you know, grades uh, uh, math teacher, right? And this stuff here is definitely basic algebra one kind of stuff and much more advanced things. So what I'm saying is you really need to have a command of this material, all right? So uh, it's just one thing that's kind of driven into my head, you know, having a degree in mathematics and just having getting beat up by my professors by proving showing that's all i did i've actually uh a ba in mathematics um and it was it was challenging i had all phds and you know it was like you know you know it really made me critically think but it, it gave me a reason a kind of a it was humbling in a sense that well if you're going to teach something you better really really know it okay and you, the worst thing you could do is just feel like, oh, this is just basic algebra. I know how to do it. So therefore, I know all the little idiosyncrasies about it. And, you know, if I do it, then my students will are going to learn. So if you're new to teaching math, that doesn't work that way at all. You really need experience at this, and you want to get around some good experienced teachers and kind of model how to explain this in a way that your your students are going to understand. Okay, that's what becoming a real, you know, a, a great teacher is about. Not just knowing the material, but teaching it in a way where your students are going to get. And that takes time. Okay, you can't, you know, if you're new to teaching, again, give yourself time to develop into a great teacher. No teachers, yeah, I'm sure there's some natural teachers out there for sure, but guess what? It gets a little bit more interesting uh, when you're teaching and you have a classroom of 25, 30 students. <laughs> and you're teaching and there's all kinds of things going on in a class and you're managing that plus you're trying to teach and doing all this other stuff that's where you really you know that's when you, you really know you're a teacher when you can balance all of that and still you know you get your students to do well then wow okay that's what a real teacher is about okay um anyways so hopefully you know you kind of like my uh advice and my teaching style and if you do I'm going to watch more of my videos. I've been on YouTube for like 12 years at the time of this video. I uh, have, uh, fortunately for me, I've, I've, I've built a good followership. I think maybe I have like around 144, 45,000 subscribers. I'm really grateful for that. So if you consider subscribing, thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I also have millions of views. You don't get to that level without people, you know, thinking that you're doing something kind of right. For me, I put a lot of, you know, passion into teaching math i just want to share my you know my style of teaching it so if you like it you can find hundreds of videos on all kinds of math stuff uh on my channel i try to organize it pretty good in different playlists so hopefully that uh, helps you out but if you want to check out my best work uh you want to check out my uh, link for the oa uh, middle grades uh, math assessment um take a look at that link. What I do there is I research uh, what's on the test and I really kind of come up with a custom curriculum that will, will, will meet that, uh, you know, what's on those tests. Of course, nobody knows exactly precisely what's on a test except for the people who have the test. But, you know, again, you can kind of get a good feel for the, the curriculum requirements or, you know, the standards they're asking you to do it. But in, in this case, you know, pretty much you can kind of sum it up as you need to know a lot, a lot of high school level mathematics, okay? A lot of algebra advanced algebra geometry all that kind of good stuff all right hey if you enjoyed the video definitely appreciate it. a thumbs up and leave me some feedback um, you know are you coming from high school maybe or elementary school and now you're switching grades I actually started teaching in high school math and thought 
some crazy reason that yeah, maybe middle school math would be easier or different and it was more challenging so anyways it's just challenging to be a teacher no matter what grade level you're teaching and um, you know if you're taking this exam uh, like more than once because maybe you struggle with it that's normal too okay teachers many many teachers have to take uh, certification exams more than once maybe more than twice uh, so just do whatever you got to do to take it but I think if I can I'll just say it one more time um, really respect that this assessment is a professional assessment and you're gonna have to put a lot of effort into study it remember you're, you know you're gonna get a license here to be teaching students middle grade mathematics in the, in the state of Ohio okay so that means that hey they want to know what they want to know the state that you know what you're doing okay well listen I wish you all the best and definitely appreciate your time and have a great day